On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you my updated car care routine and the tools I've used. Stay tuned. We're going to be sticking with the two bucket method for starters. Very basic, but it will help you keep your car clean and spread less contaminants. These are two AutoZone buckets. I painted one black so that way I know it is the dirty bucket. And then we have a grit guard in that one as well. As for the clean bucket, I didn't paint it. We got this one about halfway of water, about 2.5 gallons. Um, you want to remember that because on the back of your car wash soap, it will tell you how much, how many ounces you need per gallon um, of water that you're using. When it comes to soaps and wash mitts and or sponges, what I like to use is a chenille mitt right here. Um, it's great for catching everything. Um, I do like the lamb's wool as well, but you have to maintain those. It seems like after you wash them, they have like specks of uh, black stuff in there. I don't know what it is and I don't want to risk uh, scratching your car after X amount of uses once you see that. This right here is amazing. You can get these at the dollar store. They are travel little containers, about three ounces, which is generally what you need either in your foam cannon or your bucket um, per gallon. So I'll fill this up with my car wash solution. And from there, I'll pour it into my foam cannon or pour it in my bucket. This way I know I have six ounces and there's no questions or having to eyeball something that only measures up to four, eight, eight you know, in fours of ounces, which helps. So grab yourself multiple of these, 10 bucks. You got 10 of these in case they break. I'm sorry, 20 because they come with two and you'll be good to go. And finally, you will need your pressure washer, of course, your hose, an extension cord or a power outlet, along with a foam cannon. So what this allows you to do is basically generate high pressure. When it comes to a pressure washer, I would recommend something that would be somewhere in between 1000 to 2300. I'm sorry, 1500 to 2300 uh, PSI. These are generally rated at the first second of maximum pressure or with a zero coming out or through, I think it's the uh, the, so the soap bottle it comes with. So it's not going to get that once you get your attachments. So it's very easy to use. Plug this in. From the back, you'll go ahead and hook up your hose. Make sure everything is in there tight. I would recommend one of the first modifications for your pressure washer to be a uh, quick disconnect. So that way you're not wearing everything down and you're good to go. So you connect the hose in through the back and then I have my power source right here. That plugs in right here. I like to keep it wrapped up so I use an extension cord. Make sure this lights up. Okay, if it doesn't light up, you'll hit the reset. The thing I like about this is it is very small and it's got a locking wheel, so it's not gonna move around on a slanted driveway that I have. Next, you'll take your hose. I would highly recommend upgrading this hose as well. Uh, the one this comes with is about 16 feet. It don't feel like it, it seems more like 10. But hey, who am I to judge? So we'll get this pushed in all the way, and then you just wanna tighten this bad boy on there. And then this end goes to your gun. Um, I did order a quick release. I have a stubby gun. Uh, I These ones, they do work, but the problem is, is they're super long. So you're gonna have to not only stand back from your car, but you got like another, you know, few feet with the extension as well. So this one comes with a little cool holder right here that you attach to the gun. This way you can put your different angles of nozzles on there. Uh, press this, it goes in right here. Let go, you're good to go. So now it's technically hooked up. I could turn it on, but first I want to run the water. So back to the specs. Um, this one right here is rated maximum at 1,950 PSI at 1.58 gallons per minute. So what that means is it's going to press out that much pressure and every minute, it's 60 seconds basically, it's going to put up that many gallons of water. However, pay attention to these. I would say if you're shopping around, read reviews if it's online and read the box if you're going in the store this one right here even though it's rated at 1950 it says rated pressure is at 1300 psi and it's about 1.2 gallons per minute so that's not the maximum it's going to uh put out um once you have something electric and that's sort of low rated what i would do is once you get your foam cannon you're going to want to take uh this portion off right here 
and upgrade the orifice to a 1.1. With the smaller hole with a, with a lower pressure, it will actually force out more pressure when the foam comes out. This way uh, you'll get that nice frothy look uh, that all the YouTubers get. Personally me, um, you want something frothy to stick on it, dwell for a few minutes and then fall off. However, you don't, uh, you know, something that's a little bit more runny, that's going to actually clean a little bit better due lubrication. So let's go ahead and get this pressed on right here all the way. Watch out, baby. right now is it's going to be the soaps clinging to the dirt and pulling it off it is sunshine out right now I would not recommend washing your car under direct sunlight as you can see California is always sun out not a cloud in the sky early morning late evening would be best unless you have some deionized water or you have some no rinse mixed into your um, solution which I have so it should be okay but I'm still gonna get this off a little bit early. Let's go ahead and spray it down. As you guys may have know, the California fires from me a few years ago kind of just tore my car up. I was too lazy to wash it. I don't like to take it to a uh, car wash. So right now I just wanna do my best to see if I can revive this paint. Thought about repainting it another color, but if I can't take care of it, what's the point? Now that it's all lubricated up, not using too much pressure. If your car is really dirty, I would recommend getting like a sponge. I think it's called 
the big red sponge or black or gold they have. That way, if you want to add pressure or if you have a heavy hand, those sponges will actually absorb some of the pressure and you're not going to be making pressure points on your car as you wash. And then, once this section's done, I'm going to rinse inside of my dirty bucket, scrub this mitt around inside of the grit guard, and go from there. Windows, and then from here I will be doing the midsection, front bumper, rear bumper, and side skirts last as they have the dirtiest part of the car. This side's drying up already, so let's hurry it up. Now we rinse. One thing I've started doing is before I dry the vehicle, I'll go ahead and hit it in the air. And that's it, everybody. Thank you for staying tuned and watching. Um, I'm going to skip the tires today just because uh, this car has been sitting for a little while as I've been driving the family car. So from there, you would just hit it up with some tire dressing, get yourself a microfiber towel or one of those um, applicator pads, go around it and apply your choice of polish for your wheels if you have three-piece wheels. My personal favorite is Mother's basically a dip, eagle one dipped in mothers it works wonders and once you buff it out but thank you for watching again i know you guys are going to be in the comments oh you're you know cleaning your car in broad daylight the soap's going to dry blah 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 but hey for the sake of youtube video i got to do what i got to do for y'all to get you a video in time thank you again have a wonderful day